Hi, I'm Jenny with Sharp. We're going to be talking about scanning. We've set up two common scan destinations, scan to email and scan to a network folder or your desktop. The nice part is, even though they're going to different destinations, they have many of the same features. So let's dive in. We've got scan to email. It is as easy as even the scan to network or scan to email is basically going to your address book. Your destinations would be set up. It's as easy as find your name and press start. However, when it goes back to your email, it'll say a scanned image from a copier. And when you open up that email, the actual PDF itself is a bunch of numbers. It's actually a date stamp. So if I'm going to send it back to myself and maybe forward it on to somebody, it's nice to have that file name named. So I can just touch OK and I can either change the subject or the file name. It is as easy as touch file name, use your keyboard, or you can put a keyboard on the screen if you prefer. The nice part is when I change that name, either enter or OK, .pdf will populate automatically. The copier also can be set that if it's color, it scans in color, if it's black and white, it scans in black and white. However, you can go in and do any adjustments. Maybe if I just want black and white, straight black and white, no color at all, that would be your smallest file size. Or if I want something not color, but I'd like it grayscaled. Right now it's set to where whatever it sees, it's going to scan. Right below that's your DPI, that's your quality. The higher the number, the prettier your document looks because the more information, but the bigger your file size is. Right below that, the most common can be set up PDF, but you have other formats as well. Now, what happens a lot is when you're especially scanning to email, many times you can scan and it doesn't, it almost gets kicked back because it's too large of a document. Probably because a lot of us are scanning a lot of color, so they're big files and your IT sets limits. So a nice feature is called compact PDF. All you have to do is check that box it ups the quality from 2 to 300 to help that compression. It reduces the size of the file up to 75%. The nice part is you can, if you'd like, scan it with a preview and you actually can see that quality. You probably won't even notice, but on the receiving end, they'll be able to receive it, have a better chance of receiving it. Also, if I'm going to choose my name, Many times, our originals are double-sided. So it's nice, I can go into original and tell it two-sided book, it's reading like a book, and okay. It'll scan both sides, scan both sides, scan both sides. But what happens is, we'll sometimes have a stack, and out of 20 pages, 17 are double-sided, but three aren't. And what happens is you end up getting three blanks. So there is a feature under others that you can tell it to, blank page skip. And then you can tell it to skip the blank pages. With shadow is if you have some documents where on the back there's just dots or a little dirty, you just tell it with shadow, it won't count that as an original. What'll happen is now when I scan, it's gonna scan both sides in one pass. But what it's gonna tell me is it scanned four sheets. It saw eight sides, but it's only gonna send me four pages. That way I don't get those four blanks. So all I have to do is press OK. Some of the other features that is nice, many times um, whenever I receive something from my accountant, I have to put in the last four digits of my social network to open up that PDF. So you can basically encrypt it so someone when you accidentally send it to somebody else, they can't open that file because they don't know the encryption. So to do that, you're just going to basically find your name or your destination on your network folder. You're going to go into file format. You're going to check this box encrypt. Once you put your originals in the feeder, press OK and start, a pop-up comes up. You would create words, numbers, whatever you want, and I would put those in. And when I send that, that's what I'm going to tell the person on the receiving end in order to open it up. So if I accidentally sent it to someone else, they couldn't open it up. Now, if they forward it on to somebody, they too have to know that. 
encryption number, that whatever you told it. We also have the ability under the file format. So you kind of saw the different TIFF, PDF, uh, JPEG, but we also have something called OCR. That's optical character recognition. Basically, you can do a couple things. One, you can do a searchable PDF. But also, many times we have a document, we call this like OCR Lite, that I want to create it as a Word document. I want to be able to manipulate it, or I can make it a Excel or a PowerPoint. That way it doesn't come in as a PDF, that I can do some manipulation. The next feature is called Send Destination Link. What that's good for is, I have a document. It is a lot of color, or it's a very large document. I know if I'm gonna send it to my email, that it's not gonna be, it's gonna be too big, even if I add compact PDF to it. So what you can do is actually go in, find your name, and there's an arrow right here, and I can arrow down to where it says send destination link. All I have to do is check that box and press start. What it does is instead of sending that email through my email server, it actually sends me an email with a link. And I can click on that link and it pulls it from the hard drive of this copier to my computer. And then I can save it to wherever I like to. So basically it lets it get into your, um, without having to go through your email server. It will, as a default, stay there for four hours. That can be extended. So you have four hours to retrieve that destination link. All right, so another feature. Have you ever, where I wanted to make five copies of this, but I want to scan it too. So first I make copies and then I scan it. So now you can go in, go to your copy, press send and print. Basically comes up, says, who do you want to email to? I'm going to enter that email address. Then I want to say I want two copies or and I'm going to press start. It's going to make those copies first and then after making those copies, it's going to then email me that document. So I don't have to first make my copies and then email. So it actually saves you having to do your job twice. The other is many times we have a document where when we put it in the feeder, we want it to come in as one PDF. And that's pretty much what we usually want, is we want this pile right here to come in as one PDF. But there's many times people that do, um, I've got invoices or bills of lading, and each page, I want to be my own attachment. But I don't want to come up here and email that and individually email it for a time. I would like to come up, put all of them in, find my name, and under file format, at the bottom, it says specified pages per file. I check that box. I tell it every one page needs to be its own PDF. I could go in and say, ooh, every two pages, because maybe I have a two page invoice, two page invoice. So you actually tell how many pages to be. So now those four pages will come into my email as two attachments. Or if I had said one page, it would have come in as four attachments. Now I'm going to show you how to add an email address. You're going to go into your address book. You're going to press add new. You're going to type your name, pulling out the keyboard. All right, then you're going to put in your email address. All right, and we're going to. And then register it. So it's easy to put your name, your email address and click register. Also say that Slater is no longer with the company you can delete Slater, all right? Or if you need to edit because you maybe put in the wrong email address.